saw benefits right away. Uh, there was an issue that came up uh, uh, within ICAO that was going to have a, 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 a large negative impact on uh, airports, and it came up in an unusual way, so it didn't come up in the normal, through the normal channels. So had we not been there, um, and had our experts not been on site, uh, kind of in the room, if you will, um, the issue would have gotten pretty far along, and we would have had to try to fight it at uh, a later stage, which would have been more difficult. We hadn't been there two months before this came up, so it paid for itself <laughs> very quickly. our Airport Excellence and Safety Program that uh, we started a year ago, ICAO has been, ICAO sees it as something that's helpful to them and they've been very supportive and so they've helped us on that program and their engagement, I know we're going to talk about this a little, in a little bit, but their engagement has elevated the attention of safety and of, of elements of airport safety within that country. So we get the civil aviation authorities involved because ICAO is involved. Mm -hmm. And we've, we've even gotten ministers involved because ICAO is involved. Mm -hmm. So it is truly a symbiotic relationship. Uh, once you're a business, you, know, you start thinking about all of the various stakeholders all the constituents, um, and you, you know, and obviously local is the most important still. Um, but you're, you, you recognize your computer competing in a wider world. Mm -hmm. You become much more interested in metrics because you you need to measure your performance mm -hmm. in order to manage your performance uh, because you are more performance driven um, uh, because you're more outcome driven, and so things like you're, you're benchmarking on customer service, on facilitation, how long are your cues versus the cues of others, because you're being judged mm -hmm. and you're having to judge yourself and you're having to judge your employees and judge your suppliers and your contractors. Mm -hmm. So um, for ACI, uh, the pressure has been on us to enable um, these businesses to compare each other, mm -hmm. to compare themselves to each other, to compare themselves over time, to try to, 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 try to develop uh, standard units of measure. You know, as, as they say, and it's accurate, when you've seen one airport, you've seen one airport. You know, mm -hmm. airports are so different, mm -hmm. they're so specific, um, but you have to have some way of comparing yourself because you can't just, you know, unite an island unto mm -hmm. yourself even though you have uh, very different issues or very different uh, um, characteristics from every other airport, but you have all the same issues. All yeah. airports have all the same issues. I would just like to uh, finish off by asking you whether you see a shift in governments around the world away from viewing airports as the uh, cash cow with no end to towards a more cooperative view where whatever charges are necessary and taxes are actually fed back into the uh, infrastructure that um, is needed to, to, to expand, to handle passengers in the future? Well, it's different in different parts of the world, and I think um, it's incumbent upon us to remind governments uh, as to the true role of their airports, uh, again, no matter who owns them, um, that to use them as cash cows may seem convenient in the short run to fill a budget deficit, but it is hurting them economically in the intermediate and longer term uh, because airports are increasingly the chief economic engine. You know, there's almost nowhere in the world anymore where you can sustain an economy without aviation. The airport industry has moved a long way since the first airport privatization in 1987 with the listing of the BAA in the United Kingdom. 
Uh, there have been, of course, the emergence of different models, uh, ranging all the way from the listing of airports, like the BAA, that was the first one, all the way to private, uh, private uh, public uh, partnerships, with anything almost in between. Mm -hmm. uh, approximately today, we have more than f about 400, between 400 and 500 airports where there is uh, private equity involvement. Uh, and the interesting thing about this is, of course, that uh, the distribution around the world is, is quite uh, different. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a situation in the United States where it is the country with the least private participation in the management of airports or the ownership of airports, all the way to a situation where, for example, in the case of China, has the m highest number of airports listed on the stock exchange. So it's a very interesting situation. Because South America, to, uh, together with Europe, is the most active continent in, te in terms of airport privatizations. Mm -hmm. Uh, the highest, w probably w it has one of the highest percentages of airports with private equity. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it's very difficult actually to think of a country in South America where there hasn't been any type of airport privatization, ranging all the way from, uh, say, Argentina, where the entire uh, airport network is actually in private hands, all the way to the situation in Colombia that has been extremely dynamic. And the last big country that actually was uh, missing from that list was Brazil. Mm -hmm. And now, of course, with the uh, privatization of the three largest airports, uh, or some of the largest airports there, uh, it's really gone into this game. And of course, now we know that the Brazilian government is looking at privatizing further airports. Uh, unfortunately, the, uh, the, the conditions worldwide uh, have not uh, been very conducive mm -hmm. to this uh, sort of situation. And actually some countries uh, had to cancel the process because the investors, the private investors, were not willing to pay the amounts that the governments actually were, uh, were asking. I'm thinking in particular the case of Spain, where the process in both Madrid and Barcelona mm -hmm. had to be canceled because the potential investors said, well, you know, what you are asking is a bit too, too high. Mm -hmm. uh, but nevertheless, of course, I mean, many countries around the world, and once again, for example, in the case of Spain, the case of Portugal, the case of Greece, there is a need actually to attract uh, the private sector into the airport business. Uh, will this mean, of course, a reduction in the premiums that the governments were expecting? Probably so, mm -hmm. but nevertheless, it is going to be a continuing trend, the airport privatization. How is Africa coming along in this process? Uh, Africa is actually very interesting as well. Um, uh, there are increasing number of airports in the in the uh, with private uh, equity participation and actually the need for development there is actually going to uh, is actually going to attract the interest is attracting the interest of, of, of private uh, companies I think in particularly the case of for example edges of France which is mm -hmm. actually quite active in the ownership or, or equity uh, participation in airports in, 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 in countries that wouldn't really come to the top of your mind you know when you start thinking about it uh, of course the case of South Africa is very well known uh, although Though, of course, the uh, private equity investment actually is not that high uh, in terms of proportion. Uh, Egypt, of course, in terms of management contracts has been very, very active. Uh, and uh, it is actually one of the uh, uh, most exciting regions of the world, probably, in terms of potential.